You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Hannibal After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Hannibal After Show. More, uh, what is this? Some, some beautiful Hannibal. This is gorgeous. Classic music. The Classical Hannibal music. Aria. The very Hannibal upper Aria. Class. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this show has become very upper class. I'll take it. I'll take it. From now on, they must speak in projected English. We sure. must all speak with received pronunciation, RP. Exactly. Bing is for doing, and we are doing the Hannibal After Buzz After Show. Uh, I am Joe Braswell. I'm here, uh, as always, with Julia Kearley. Hi, gentlemen. And I'm here joined by my main man, Nando Velasquez. Hey there. <laughs> What's up? In the shocker of the universe, I am joined by Joe Sanfilippo. <gasps> I, I missed a couple of episodes. Man, Life got me into four of us. But you know what that means? All four of us are here together. Yes. yes. The world is ending right now. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> That's how it I just, brace for impact. Is that how you brace? You, you are a terrible <laughs> bracer for impact. You, but I'll protect you. <laughs> so, we just, so, so we've made it. Congratulations. Oh, it only took us nine episodes. We, we yeah. did it, everybody. We did it. Oh. Uh, the, you know, nine episodes in, we finally got the four of us together. We're going to be a full <laughs> show with all of us going full tilt boogie. Boom. Whatever that means. I, I can't take it. I'm leaving. Oh, yeah. no, no, don't no, no, go. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Hannibal, uh, Trunamon, right? Yeah. Which is a sorbet? I, I, cleanser? I didn't look it up. Uh-oh. I, I'm pretty sure it's a... I could be completely wrong about this. And you know what? Oh, we should have our, our French cuisine, our French course meals, by the way... We should we should be experts at this point. Uh, right, we still by don't now? know these episodes. I mean, like we and we know they're coming weeks in advance. <laughs> <laughs> and we get here, we're like, ah, trend what is this? True. <laughs> I was kind of out by entree. I really didn't know what was happening anymore. I am, That's I w- where my knowledge stops. But there's not like this, this thing called It's the a internet. traditional <laughs> French palate cleanser. Yes. Oh. Of the internet. Joe you Braswell. got it. Joe Braswell. What else? Braswell, that's me. No. Uh, I said it he before. Said it. I oh, you said it too? Oh, that's oh, true. That's oh, okay. What that's what the man said. Uh, sorry, I was like, uh, palate cleansers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just the basics of refreshing your palate between courses. That's Great. what it is. Uh, well, I've never been so excited. Yeah. Would Traditional you? pack. Uh, Le True Normand. In Normandy, locals rely on apple brandy as oh. a digestive. Le True Normand, or the Norman break, is a fiery shot of Calvados mm. right in the middle mm. of the meal. It's, it hits hard and fast, yet is inexplicably mm. effective as a palate cleanser and appetite stimulant. Oh. It's yet to be determined whether it has a successful, uh, is whether it has as successful an astringent property on one's palate as it does one's wits. But either way, it does work. So it, it mostly mm. clears your palate. It definitely makes you stupid. Definitely, <laughs> makes, definitely makes you drunk. Makes Maybe you clears your palate. Excellent. But did you pour it on some sorbet or something? It doesn't say here, but there are different ways of doing it. Apparently. Why wouldn't you All pour right. it on? So you can pour it on anything you want. I know. Are you you buy it, you can do whatever you want with it. All right. So <laughs> let's get into this. Cover yourself in tuna mono here. Uh, the, these episodes, you know, don't don't get any worse, do they? No, I mean, I, I, man, I, you know, this this is really, really, really high level stuff we're dealing with here. Guys, does this stuff really happen? Human totem poles, I wings being I, flayed off yeah. your back. Does this stuff happen? I, I gotta say, I'm getting lo- concerned. Logistically speaking, I think the human totem pole <laughs> is kind of a tough one to pull off. I mean, I'm just I'm just picturing this old man scurrying up the 17 foot pon- 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 you lugging a dude up to the top. How do yeah. you do that? He well, was- they, we we sh- we saw the actually in the making of in the pendulum flashback. Mm-hmm. If you look carefully, we saw the making of the totem pole. The totem pole, and what it was is the pole was on the ground. Right. He lined it all up on the ground, and there were sticks on the pole. It right. I, I, yeah, I got all that. So he like did it all. But on how the do ground. you get the sucker up? How do you get it up yeah, by yourself? You're such an old guy too. It was a rope. I, I don't know. That's some serious pulley system. Pulley system. Pulley system. Leverage. 
Yeah. Let's yeah. A bunch of engineers in here. That's a pulley. We got it. What are you talking about? So Plus anyway. eight guys, uh, you know, they get overpaid for a couple hours I, I of work. I just was just trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What do you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to say nothing. Never mind. Don't do it. No, I didn't I, do I it. I know where you were going. Yeah, Don't you know where I was going. I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> where I was going is no good. I know. Uh, but, I know. But I just wonder how many guys were on set building that. And I just think the irony, like, there must have been like eight guys working on that at any yeah. given time. And then, you know, the turnaround was one dude that did it. Yep. But I think I think this kind of creepiness does happen, though. It's awful. Really? Yeah, I think Human so. Human totem poles, Joe. All right. Uh, well, so that happened. I'm hoping not. Uh, I hope and, not and too. More, more, most importantly, we found out in this episode. This episode was a lot about Will losing time, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and there was a lot revealed in this episode, which we'll get to as well, mm-hmm. with with Abigail's character, with Will's character, um, I feel and, like and with Hannibal's character as well. I was wrong a lot. <laughs> Not the first time, Flippo. Not the first time. Not the first time. It's nice that you could admit it. I'm yeah. strong like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's completely fine. Uh, but what, so this episode, I think it was directed by, I, did, I think it was directed by my man uh, Guillermo. It uh, was. It was. Yeah, it was. Guillermo, who's, you know, who's, who's great. We talked about he's uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro's main guy, and he's also, he also works with Robert Rodriguez. And, you know, th- what I noticed about this episode, it had a very, like, dream-like quality to it. And it made me, rem- it made me think about, Sort of uh, Will losing time in that, in that whole space, especially that first act of the episode where Will is it's revealed that Will's losing time, Abigail's having nightmares. It had this sort of like, at least the first half, had this sort of like Twin Peaks sort of dreamy quality to it. In my opinion, I, if I well, thought so, I, I, I got to say I like I like the way he went with it because that that there could there's a temptation to make a weird trans I would imagine that there's a temptation to make a weird transition uh, or, or to do something tricky or, or funky when Will shows up at Hannibal's office. Yeah, but he didn't do that. He just jumped into it. It was a jump cut right into it. And that was, I think, much more jarring. I think it had a much more jarring effect than having, like, a, like you could have a sound effect, like you're coming out of water, you know, or, or, or like, you're, zzzz, like right. you're, like, coming back into reality. But he didn't do that. He just jumped right into it. And, and that, I think, was much more abrupt. And I, I felt like it was a much more natural way for Will to kind of wake up, so to speak. It was definitely effective in, in that it made us feel the panic that, that uh, Will was feeling Yeah, because we well. felt it. We're like, what the right. hell's what going happens? on? What happens? There has to be some explanation. Well, speaking of Will, let's jump, let's jump into this thing. Um, but before we do, Phil, are you here? No? Okay, but before we do, uh, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in to us on iTunes. We are still, still somehow, number one. Yeah. We're still doing it. Awesome. Um, the, the number one most downloaded podcast here on AfterBuzz. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Uh, Hannibal is, is loved by as many of you as it is us. So um, continue to comment, continue to download, continue to listen to us as well. And uh, in addition to that, Phil... Phil. Phil? Where's my music? Oh, we're oh. Steven. Steven Lemieux. I was called oh. by my name. I was asked here. <laughs> my presence was requested. I asked for music uh, upon my entrance. I hear a theme song. Is this like this, the Raw after show? Where you no chance it, in hell? Is that? What I know. Doing? Well, here's the thing. I was. Uh, I'm ready to come out. You know, and I, I want this grand entrance. I want to show how great After Buzz is. Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> That, Steven, that, that, give me our music. Right. I want. All right. Reason why I'm out here. Yes. Adventures of Serial Buddies is a movie produced by many after buzzers here, um, mainly Kevin Undergaro and yep. Murray Menounos, yep. our creators, CEOs, everything under the sun. And uh, you know, it just came out yesterday on the digital platforms. Um, you're already downloading this podcast on iTunes. So take a pit stop. Go to. Uh, you know, search in Adventures of Serial Buddies, download it. It's the first serial killer buddy comedy of all time. Starring, it's got Christopher Lloyd, Artie Lang, Kathy Lee Gifford, Beth Bears from Two Broke Girls, Henry Winkler. I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm missing my like, hero. The, the, the Fonz is in here. The Fonz. The Fonz. I met, you know, I got a chance to work with him. He's he's fantastic. I can tell you stories. Oh, sure. Um, but, you know, one of the reasons for you guys, After Buzzers, um, why we're asking this, we don't do a lot of these commercials. Um, in fact, I I can't can't imagine hey, Hannibal's never done a commercial. Nope. No, that's the that. first one. That is. And so all we're asking Only hurts you, for a minute. That's right. And you know what? Uh, instead of doing like, hey, something that you're never going to use, this is a comedy movie. Right there. You guys yeah. can actually enjoy this. Yeah. And it's and it's really cheap, by the way. So check it out. iTunes, Adventure of the Serial Buddies. If for some reason you don't understand iTunes, which is b- baffles me, by the way, if you're listening <laughs> to this, um, go to SerialBuddies.com. And there's a link to the iTunes thing, and it'll just take you there. So we've made it pretty simple. 
Yes, I yeah. feel. Oh, I can't wait to watch it. You guys already like serial killers because you're listening to Hannibal. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It ties right in. There what was I thinking? Really? We are the serial killer show. We did Base Motel. We did Following, following. We did Hannibal. Yeah. So I haven't slept right in about 10 months. But <laughs> yeah, sure. And here's the thing you got to come off eventually off right. of that high. You don't want to be considered a serial killer it yourself. So, so now you got to get to the comedy of all of it. Exactly. And that's what Adventure of Serial Buddies is all about. And yeah. I do want to say, like, like, like Phil said, it's a family affair here. That, uh, our, my co host from Justified, John Comerford, he's, he's, he's involved in the movie. Um, my other co-host, Steve Bottomley, did some music for the movie. Uh, Tamara Berg did some wardrobe, some costuming for the movie. So uh, all your favorite Astro Buzz hosts are involved, and it helps us all. And it's funny. And the farting music you hear is a, is, is a, is a motif in the movie. So yes. it's not just random that I'm li- that we're listening to. Would you say it's a palate song. cleanser? Would you say it's, it's, it's a true no more? <laughs> so no anyway, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, advanced fans. Spread the word. And uh, back to your regular scheduled programming with Hannibal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right. that was Phil's Vtex. Phil's Vtech with Thank us. Thank you very Ooh. much, Phil. Oh, oh there it is. Oh. We got there's, a drop. Music. there's an outro music. There. All right. Uh, thanks, Steve Lemieux, who I didn't mention. Steve Lemieux on the ones and twos and the boards, making it all happen back on there. On the ones and twos. Um, so, back to Hannibal. Back to Hannibal. Back to Hannibal. Speaking of serial killers. Our guy Hannibal. <laughs> um, so, uh, or speaking of serial buddies, because we have, uh, you know, maybe we have Hannibal and Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm jumping ahead here, but I do want to talk about Will. I mean, or ask you, Joe. Well, let's talk about Will. I mean, this, this guy is, we've been talking about it for a while, and, and obviously you guys have been talking about it since I haven't been here for a couple of shows, but he's been getting closer and closer to a full-blown breakdown. I mean, he's getting yep. he's just getting worn and worn and worn. And and uh, and I think to this episode, we really, we, we're really crossing over into a dangerous place. I mean, if he drove three and a half hours, like he, so we're at, we're at the totem pole, and, uh, and and he loses time. I think there's something about the totem pole or maybe getting into the serial killer's head, uh, getting into our our, uh, our guy's space that snapped him again. And so he loses three and a half hours driving to uh, to Hannibal's. He, he kind of snaps two in Hannibal's. This is a terrifying... Can you imagine living in that where no. you just you find yourself places and well, don't, don't know I, how you got there? I don't know. You said he's close to a full-blown breakdown. This is pretty breakdown-y to me. I mean, I don't how much closer to a full-blown... This is a breakdown. Uh, you know what? No, I don't think I don't so. Know. I, I yeah. think bottom means you're not functioning anymore. Right. He's still functioning. I mean, he's still. I mean, he Where asked. He asked. Uh, he asked Jack. He says. Uh, he says. You know, I'm sorry. He, remember, he apologized to Jack. I'm sorry. I, w- I wasn't myself. And Jack's right. like, What are you talking about? Right. He says, uh, yeah, You know, I just wasn't myself. And then Jack kind of gets a sense that something's wrong. And Jack goes fishing a little bit. And you got something you want to tell me? Sure. But but he it, he didn't do anything that led anyone to believe that he was. Checking out. Well, right. look at the scene in Quantico when he's going over the uh, going over the case, and then Alana walks right in, and he snaps it, like snapped his fingers, and all of a sudden he's in an empty room. Yeah. He didn't realize he was in an empty room. He thought That's he was bananas. debriefing. He thought he was debriefing everybody. He thinks he's giving a class. Yeah. Well, Do you know what's a little worrying though? I realized uh, throughout the uh, throughout the duration of the episode, the more times he had is he lost time, blackouts. It seems like he's learning to deal with it or hide it or mask it a little bit more. Like he's like he's expecting it or he's not surprised more so that it's right. that it's happening to him. Because the first one, he's panicking. Right. You know, right. he's he's hysterical. And by the time Alana catches him at Quantico, he just. He covers his covers his ass. Uh, and by the time he's in the the you know the uh, the whatever the coroner's room, the medical examiner's room, he is basically holding it together, sort of blinking and holding it together, almost as if you know this is I don't want this to happen, or let me hold it together. Uh, you know, shout out to Fancy Pantsy Dancy. Mm. He's he's <laughs> doing a damn thing as an actor. Oh, you Dancy. You were saying, Joe, you were going <laughs> to say so something. Uh, I'm not going to ever say. Fan- I'm not even going to repeat it. Um, <laughs> FPD. Not happening. Um, no, no, I'm not saying it. All right, do you? Is that a thing now? No, what is, I mean, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make it a thing. I'm sorry, I, FPD. I apologize. Right. If you're trying to make it a <laughs> I don't thing, think, I don't think it's a thing. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> it's like, did I miss a thing? It may no, be a thing. Not a thing. Um, I, I think uh, you know. In, in, in looking at all this, this stuff with Will that's going on. I mean, the 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 difference between him and everybody else on on these teams is he is not able to distance himself from it because his talent is empathy. Sure. So he has to experience it in a different way. And, and uh, you know, almost, it, I, I know it sounds weird, but I almost feel like Jack is his pimp. Like, like he's almost a whore, yeah. and Jack is his oh, pimp, yeah. and everybody has to leave because we're going to let the, the let him do his empathy thing. Yeah. Right. And, and everybody else can keep an arm's distance, but Will isn't able to do that. And, you know, it, it's interesting to kind of dis- think a little bit about empathy and what it means. I mean, it's, it's, 
the, you, the, you recognize the emotions that are being experienced by other session or fictional beings. I mean, you, you have to be able to sit in their space. And to do that, you have to be them for a minute. And I think he's, just, he's losing himself completely. And Hannibal becomes his safe spot. But with Alana, like you said, he was covering. Because I don't think he feels as safe with Alana as he does with Hannibal, which is creepy as all get Well, he could be more vulnerable with Hannibal. He's, he's not attracted to Hannibal in that sense. Right. He wants to be right. Or is totally he? Fine. Yeah, exactly. He, he thanked her for her honesty when she admitted that he's not stable. She, you know, because he, I don't think he wants to show her that side of him. How crazy was that scene? That just, yeah. Is that how psychiatrists have, have relationships? I mean, I'd she's... like to have a relationship with you. Let's talk about the pros and cons <laughs> and the way I feel right now. I feel like I might feel if I did feel. Well, right. one thing that I thought was really interesting, too, about the whole Will blacking out and his empathy, when Hannibal was, uh, was talking about his blackouts, I felt like... You know, mo three of us at least work on Bates Motel, and we're dealing with Norman Bates on blackouts all the time. Yeah. I, w I wanted to, I, I actually want to rewatch that whole ep uh, that whole scene and write down everything because it was really curious to hear him saying that Will was abused. He started mm -hmm. saying he figures Will's been abused, yeah. and he has his empathy problem, and that's what he's hiding, and that's what that's why he's abusing himself technically with his empathy. Yeah, problem. that's it. Well, like you're you're putting yourself through this. Over and over again. But it actually gave me light to, to try and look at Bates Motel slightly different. Uh, forgive me for anybody who's not watching Bates Motel or who hasn't followed us on these shows, but I just find it's a really interesting, uh, interesting time. I mean, I'm sure that they did the research, the writers did the research to try and explain these blackouts. He's losing time. Losing time. Yeah. Excuse me, losing time. It's, you know, I, well, a, a couple of things, Jerry, that struck me. Back to what you were saying about the, the psychiatrist relationship. I love that, too, because essentially what she's saying is, I dig you. But you're effing crazy. Right. So, yeah, I can't do it. So like, that's not very, you know, who wants to, who wants to hear that? But, but it was we don't so, let him down easy. Yeah, Atlanta. but then she's like, like, I'm qualified, and I'm qualified, and, I, and my expert opinion I'm is willing to you're throw my, my yeah. I'm willing to throw my practice other away. Than, other than that, but you got to be stable. <laughs> but there was more to it. She's, well, you know, I, I, I regret leaving. Yes. I mean, it was so controlled. Sure. I'm so in charge of my emotions. And I just felt like a lesser being for a moment. As I'm watching that scene, I'm like, because that's never how I just, I mean, I hook up, yeah. and it felt good. Right. And then... Then we should we should hook up we should hook up more. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's, the ladies must just be falling right, right over yeah. here. How, how did it? Because I'm so deep. <laughs> And it's I, good. It's good. Yeah. More good. Wow, I, I, I can exact barely same resist thing. over here. <laughs> I, I do the exact same thing, except for a lot less articulate. Right? <laughs> Mine just goes like a... Uh, <laughs> but Call so again? The, well, guys, it's getting hot in here. Getting steamy. You know, we know how to do that. We, we, know, we know what the lady's like. Uh, the, um, the other thing, though, but, but to, to your point, what, what's, what strikes me, the question I have for all of you guys is... I'm not so sure, like, so there's this losing time thing, right? And this is what I was talking about, this dreamlike quality. I, don't, I wasn't sure what was real and what wasn't. And what I mean by that is, you know, in the moment, the, the, the three moments I caught was when he had that flashback that when he's on the beach looking at the totem, there was a drop of blood that splashed on his face. Hmm. And that's what, like, snapped him into he's, you know, in Hannibal's office. And there's no blood and he's whatever. I mean, maybe he wiped it off and drove, whatever, that's fine. And then the next time we have that scene when he's in Quantico giving the class, and then boom, there's no class. I mean, was there a class and he lost time and then the class left and then he just came in and Lana came in? Yeah, or... was that losing time or was that like a psychotic break? Well, I think that they, they think they've established that he's losing time, but it, it also plays like he, there's a break there. And then, when, then if you mix in his trances and his dreams, I don't know what the F is going on. So I don't know. How do you, how do you, how do you read it? Oh my God! I, mean, is, I, it, I feel is, 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 is he losing time, or are the are, 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 is he, are these dreams? What do you think? I think it's I think it's a whole bunch of this stuff wrapped into one. Right. I don't think he can pinpoint it. I don't think anyone can pinpoint it. Hannibal said, "I mean, he's he's overwhelmed. Yeah. He's overwhelmed by this. Um, I mean, I, I still am very fascinated by the fact that he's covering it up more and more and more." Sure. Um, which leads me to believe, though, that he's going to start thinking it's normal and he's not going to be able to tell when he is in a dreamlike state or doing these things for real. Right. Joe, did you, what did you, did you, did you read it as just always a dream, losing time, or did you lose it any? Because no, that also was a hallucination, but I'm not so sure. I think, I think he's breaking in a bunch of different ways, and I think it's going to, it's going to keep manifesting in weird ways. It's got like the, the, the class, uh, the classroom, I think, was, was particularly bizarre. I think you're right, because we had a clean, we had a clear cut uh, idea of what happened with, with the, uh, with, with the break from the beach to Hannibal. We know that he just, he kind of lost that time and he ended up at Hannibal's office. But the class, was it happening, was it not happening? Or was he just sitting there talking to people that were never there? Did he did he come in and imagine the whole thing? And if he's hallucinating entire entire groups of people that clearly aren't there, then 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 who's to say what's real and what's not? You're right. Yeah. But um 
uh, either way, our, our boy Will is getting broken. Yeah, he's getting broken up. And uh, I mean, Nando, what do you got? On, on, on the, on the, on just, just taking a survey on the hallucination versus. Well, I just time. think it seems like every single episode is something new, is a new slight little layer going on. The losing time was something uh, this time. I, I believe last week, if I'm not bleeding things uh, into each other, was hearing these the the animals. animals. Yeah. 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 And then the hallucinations of that elk. Yep. You know, all, all of these things. A stag, excuse me. So yeah, it, right. it seems like every single episode is something new. This one, I don't know if you want to count what happened in Quantico as a separate thing from losing time. Because uh, it's possible he actually, you know what? It's possible he did lose time. It's possible he was in Quantico uh, doing that uh, doing that whole class, and then he next next second he realizes he's in the same exact spot he was, but class has been over for a while. But right. Alana that's asked if he was too. rehearsing. So he was talking. So he was, so he talking. was talking. So that's he was true. talking to an empty room, running his slides. I mean, regardless, maybe he just went back to start. I don't maybe know everybody's in slides. A, no, he I, was. He was running slides. Like when she, came when she in. walked in. Yeah. Okay. I'm almost positive. I'm not sure. No, I didn't I see the slides behind him. No, when she got the there, it was all over. It was, it was all over. dark. Was it, it over? So, it was yeah, over. so it could be the class was dismissed and he just lost time. He I just don't lost know. it. Who knows? Anyway. But it's interesting. I just see, I, I wonder how many more layers they can come up with on, on, this, on his delusions uh, well, to see what's going on. It bummed me out that he had a, an episode in his classroom because that seems to be the one place where he feels the safest. Yeah, he seems the most you control know, that, in the classroom. He was comfortable that, there. He didn't want to go back. I'm he didn't want to go back him. in the field. He wanted yeah. to be there. Right, this was his, he, you're right, this is his safe oh, spot. Is yeah, he had, he had mentioned with Jack before, maybe I'll just go back to teaching. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, I don't no, know. Exactly. That, that was sad. So, <laughs> the, um, the other thing, that Hannibal did mention though, and I, I think I, I think I teased at this, or one of us talked about this in one of the prior podcasts, is that uh, you know Will Will's losing time and Will's uh, hallucinant. I mean, L Will's empathy gets him closer and closer to being sort of a serial killer mm -hmm. himself. He's like one step away. I don't know what that step is from sort of being doing these acts himself. And Hannibal said it. Hannibal's like, I my fear is that my good friend Will. My fear is that one day you'll be making a totem of your own. Right. So, um, which which begs the question, like I, I still can't. It, are Hannibal and Will? I mean, is, is Hannibal Will's friend? Yes. Or is he? Yeah. Well, yes. Is, we used the term frenemy last time. But I think no. he genuinely cares about him. What I think send you're him right. He was death last yeah. week. What's that? Two weeks ago, he sent him to his death. I think presumably, that was the ultimate with test. Tobias. I think that was the test of all tests. He seems to test to test his friends. I wonder right. if he if he wants him to become a killer. And I don't think so. All part of it. He wants I don't him think to so. eventually turn into a killer. I mean, maybe. Well, okay. Well, I'll, I'll say that to Hannibal because I got I got some thoughts when we, when we well, talk about that. But go ahead. Two go ahead, two Joe. things. Number one, you're right. The uh, when 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 Alana Bloom. I just checked it on on the magic pad. Mm -hmm. When Alana Bloom came back in, uh, you're right. The, uh, the the everything was turned off. So he was just talking. He right. wasn't running slides. Um, I I don't. I'm think, never wrong, by the way. Yeah. The, well, they, they, thank goodness that someone's here who thinks that. <laughs> um, uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't think. Hannibal wants Will to become a killer I, at all. I think Hannibal loves, I think there's a genuine, uh, I think Hannibal genuinely likes Will. And I think what he likes, well, I, I can't say all that he likes about him. I think one of the things he likes about him is that he would be able to understand him. I think that that is, you know, Hannibal is someone who's desperately seeking uh, on some level, uh, recogn not recognition, but uh, understanding. And no one could really understand him but Will. And I think that eventually that's going to happen. I think that that's going to be, uh, I think Hannibal's almost setting himself up for that to happen. When it does, you know, he'll, I, I think that's his reward almost for everything he's done. Because it, it'll be a moment when there is someone who genuinely hears, feels, sees everything he's done and can really appreciate all the intricacies of it. Because everybody else will be judging and fighting and catching, but Will will genuinely understand it. And I don't think he wants to make him a serial killer. I don't think he wants anything like that. He didn't want a serial killer buddy with Tobias. Mm -mm. He didn't want anything to do with that. I think he wants... But he doesn't get to mold Tobias. Tobias is already yeah. his own person. I think he's going to mold uh, our girl Abigail. I think that's his protege. Yeah. And the term is not serial killer buddy. It's serial buddy. Serial buddy! <laughs> what? Anyway. See what we did there? <laughs> uh... What 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 about you, Nana? What what, what left out at you? What do you got? Well, I, I, I seem to talk. About, I talked about it last week. This week, it seems like they always try and up the uh, up the case as far as gruesomeness, as far as goriness. Yeah, I mean, where I, do we go from a seventeen person totem pole? Yeah, exactly. Where do we go from there? The wall is pretty high up right now. The, it, it, uh, that was a pretty creepy totem pole. Uh, nod to whoever's in the writer's room thinks about this kind of stuff. Right. Uh, although I wouldn't really want to know. I would worry about that person <laughs> too. Uh, Who's that guy? Yeah, exactly. A very, very interesting, uh, interesting side case, 
so to sure. speak. Yeah, yeah, somebody went, uh, somebody yeah. went and visited Vancouver and came back and said, I have an idea. Yeah. I got a plan. <laughs> what is uh, Vancouver? Lots of totem poles, man. There's lots of uh, lot, uh, Pacific Northwest. There's lots of Indians up there. Lots oh, okay. of uh, the, the, the Pacific Northwest I tribes. I bet, you're, oh. I bet you're referring to what happens in, in, in that. Never mind. <laughs> no, no, I meant like that's, uh, that's the, the geographically where totem poles. Where totem poles uh, I thought you were yeah. making a marijuana reference. I was not. I thought you were saying the writers went to Vancouver. Well, Vancouver does not have legal marijuana, but a, a city right below it called Seattle does. I'm confused. I'm just okay. telling you. Let's okay. get back on track. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Let's just get back on track. So anyway, I'm trying to find exactly what it is. What I thought was really interesting about the uh, about this case too is when Will uh, got into his uh, dream state to try and figure out the the crime and figure everything out. What I thought was really interesting is usually his his it's almost his go-to sign is uh, this is my design. He likes to yes. say that, mm -hmm. but for this one, it was uh, it was totally different. It was uh, this is my legacy, this is my resume, this is my work of art. It, it, almost even from there, there was a finality about this totem pole, which I guess it, it makes sense even before you figure out what happens. Is that he's not looking at it? They're not, they're not necessarily looking for a serial killer who will kill again. They're looking at a serial killer who just showed his entire work of it's art. Done. Yeah, like, yeah, like, it's a, all like done. a gallery, yeah. like a gallery scene. Yeah, exactly. So this is the more of the case of trying to hunt down the person who did all this, but is done, is completely hmm. done, which I thought was really, really interesting. Because again, it, it wasn't really my design. It was my this was my resume. This is my resume and yeah. my legacy. Which I thought was really you know what else is interesting to me to that point and kind of say weighing off of Will is that yeah. unfortunately for Will. He's n never wrong. He's always right when he does his, this is my design. Yeah. This is why this person is doing this. And this is probably maybe why it pains him so much, why he's like, ugh. But it, it sucks. I kind of want, for his sake, for him to be wrong once. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Oh, maybe the world isn't so bad. It but, might be good for him. Yeah, because he, even this one, like, he's like, this is my legacy, this is my resume. And I'm sure just, enough, that's exactly what it was. I think he's know? just grateful that he didn't have to dream up 17 different murders when he looked at that totem pole of all those bodies. Oh, yeah, go through each and every one. Each and every one. Oh. He just went through the last one. Uh. Yeah, that would be that would be a bit really insane. Yeah. That would be absolutely insane. But I, I thought it was a really awesome case. I love the twist at the end, although I oh, kind of yeah. saw yeah. coming where they figured out that the first and the last victims were connected right. and that uh, the killer accidentally thought that the first victim was the father yeah. of uh, the woman he loved, loved and, and that the, the last one was the son that he bore but it really was it really was the killer's own son a little double, and double that, reverse whammy uh, and creating in trying Whoops. to create his legacy he, he destroyed, destroyed his, his own yep. I loved it I loved that whole and, and, and you know Lance Hendrickson was the guy and Lance Hendrickson who's an amazing actor amazing actor he's always, always the never guy. seen him before has he, has he done some other work uh, <laughs> he's done one or, two, one or two little things one or two things what, a, what an amazing guy oh, I love watching Bishop him. from Aliens that's, that's, oh, yes. that's, that's my guy Bishop from uh, oh yeah he has a great book too uh, I can't remember the name of it I'll I, I'm Creepy by Lance Hendrickson no, <laughs> no he's a fascinating you should I'm definitely sorry. read his book he has a very fascinating way of looking at things and he's a really amazing person well he's you really know it, it's interesting that, that the, you know uh, the word totem um, actually, it, it actually the original word meant his kinship group. So that's kind of ironic hmm. that oh. that that hmm. this is what you end up with on that totem pole is is his son at the very tip top of his kinship group pole. Oh, Joseph that is, that is Filippo ironic. going a little deeper. A little bit of knowledge for you people Ooh, via right. the interwebs. Wow, right. take a sip. You're welcome. Uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, audience. <laughs> <laughs> but I did I did like the. Um, uh, yeah, I do agree with you that the, the sun twist was very cool. Was yeah. A little, a little uh, I felt a little bit of Maury Povich, like, you know, <laughs> you are... You are the father. The father. <laughs> oh, I told, I told you. you. I told you. I told you. You're not the father. <laughs> I, was waiting, I was waiting for Lance to do that. How come anybody goes on that show no. anymore? If someone calls you and says, hey, I want you to come on this show, don't go. Don't yeah. do it, guys. I mean, but i tell you what. Like, uh, oh, here's the book. The book name is Not Bad for a Human. Not bad for a human. Yeah, I totally recommend that read. I should have known the name of it, but yes. Yeah. Anyway, I, I do think you know, Jack and Will were a little smug. They're a little, little happy. They're, they had a little Maury in them. They're very happy to tell them. Well, this know. man thought oh, yeah. he like, did all this well. to, to actually go and and go to prison because it was better than his other options, and right. he thought he he thought he escaped the system. So it's always nice to see uh, to see it go back to oh, well. Absolutely. No, you're gonna have to, well, you have to go to prison, but you're gonna have this weighing on you the whole time. There so. was that great line though: "You didn't secure your legacy; you murdered it." You that murdered it. That's what, uh, and Lance had that horrible the, the horrible line, which was you know, I mean, when he's kind of in, in his sort of smug, I'm the guy. He, was, he said, uh, "They had every reason to kill them. I had, well, I had every reason to kill them, but they had no reason to die." 
you know, that was kind of a weird sort of like yeah. Some, that was some an awesome real line. serial killer ish, man. Ooh. I like I said, I we all say this again, but I I want to I really hope there is no totem guy, mushroom guy, angel wing guy. I really hope these guys aren't real. Oh, That's all I cello guy. What upset me and what makes me think about that is when he said they never saw me coming unless I wanted them to. Yeah, that, uh, that no. worries me. That that it's that such a chicken shit thing though. I mean, like yeah. these these they, they, these guys that feel like they're predators when no one else knows there's a game being played. Like it's just it's oh, it's so frustrating. The idea. Yeah. Of, they, mm, the rest of us are living nice and they're yeah, yeah. stupid serial killers. Stupid serial uh, killers. They're what stupid about? killing us. <laughs> killing stuff. You know, just in case there are any serial killers listening, you guys are okay. Yeah. They <laughs> said they these guys said you weren't. I Net, said, okay, Net I just does, let it go. I let yeah. it go. Just letting you know. Net, Net All does. serial killers, we, I like you guys. You guys are cool. Yes. Yeah. Just making sure. Mm. sure. Yeah. Uh, Julia, what, what, what do you got? What, 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 did you, what did you want to talk about today? What left out of you? Oh, I'm all about my girl Abigail. Abigail, a lot happened with Abigail. She oh, is a lot going a on with her. Fascinating one to oh, me. Abigail. Oh, Abigail. Yeah. Oh. Definitely uh, trying to figure out, like they were talking about at the end, monster or victim? Monster mm -hmm. or victim? Not quite sure. She, what she definitely is, though, is a survivor. Sure. Absolutely, 100%. We see her. I don't know. You see her put on many different masks in this one, mm. right? You see her flooded with guilt mm -hmm. when she's talking about uh, uh, Michael Michael Boyd Boyle. Mm -hmm. Boyd. 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 Michael Boyd. Yeah. Um, we see her worried about uh, how the public is going to perceive her, mm -hmm. and uh, we also see her, uh, you know, start to take control of her future. Yeah. You know, in, in in her little manipulative sort of ways, and she always is so wide-eyed, little trembling lip, and creased brow. But I don't know about her. Well, I yeah, well, I, it's weird because I thought you know I'm really just back and forth with this because Joe said he was wrong. I did think the question was, did she or didn't she know? Was she or was she not in on the murders? And you know, how much she, did she did or didn't she know? And is she a killer? And even at the end, when we find out. Spoiler alert! If you, <laughs> that, if you haven't she finished it, if you haven't finished the episode, that she is, she did know about the mother. She did help her dad. It, she seemed like Hannibal said, sort of reluctant victim, and she wasn't like, "Come on, dad, let's go kill some ladies." Right. Like uh, she seemed right. terrorized she in was, that flashback. Wait, she seemed terrorized. She didn't seem like very. I, I'm not, hold on, I I got it. Hold on, I, I'm just. You, you know that I was on Abigail's team. You know that I sat there and went rah, rah, rah. I argued about the goddamn pillows with yeah. the hair in them. I said she couldn't have known when the hair came out. The, uh, right? I told you. And I'll, you told me, and I fought you. Yes. And now I'm wrong. As usual. And mm, mm. and now <laughs> I'm, I'm going to turn, turn this whole thing around because now you knew I will give you girl one in fear. Right. I might even give you girl two. Mm -hmm. Girls three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, sorry, no. But you, you don't think that maybe she started to get good at it, and maybe she was pretty proud of herself and what okay, she was able well, to accomplish case, after a few. After that, the first one, after she's the first numb to one it. or two. No, no, no. So in that case, she's not a victim. She's a monster. No, I am in no way condoning you know anything that she, the fictional Carol, character Abigail Hobbs, may may or may not have done. But I am saying that this is more about this is what Hannibal was saying. My friend Hannibal. This is more about her being the victim and abuse. Like her dad, it's her dad, and her dad's teaching her all these things. Her dad is making her do these things. It's almost like I don't get realistic, but it's like you know when the dad makes you. you know, this is all these molestation stories. The dad makes you do all these weird things, and you're like, it's my dad. What do I do? There's a lot of that. There's a lot of like, come on, do this for me. This is the way to do it. I'll teach you how to. You know, this is honoring them, and I can do this so I don't kill you. And and she didn't seem happy about it. And she still seems, even when she's confessing to Hannibal, she still seems very conflicted about it and calling herself a monster. If she is a monster, she'd be spiking the football. Like, Hannibal, what's up? I did it too. <laughs> Boom. Like, well, no. she would have killed Boyd and, and been less remorseful. Yeah, about she would have been like, That's true. Boyd, Hannibal, let's bury this fool in the snow. Well, so, the by, way, no. so by your rationale, if I plow into a group of children no, with my car this is and I feel really bad, this sounds like knowing you're my rationale. I, 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 I didn't do it. <laughs> okay. Why do no, I feel like I you're I, up Well, your... I feel really bad. No, okay. Why do I feel and like I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty dark-haired no. girl with blue eyes, and I cried, and if, so it's okay. Bullshit. If, if, if your father was was it has had brought you up, teaching you the ways of plowing, that the only way to be good for him <laughs> is to plow through. Uh, I don't the understand. Thing, does not use the word plowing. The Navy. Then maybe that would be that would be. I close. was gonna say that does sound like a familiar conversation. Yeah, it sounds like a completely different conversation we're having here. You started it. 
Oh, you went down, the, you went down you, the hypothetical slippery slope. You, you started talking about plowing. By the way, by the way, <laughs> you're why do I feel like you're setting up your defense for a future when you, uh, when you go with some kids? Uh, well, I, I, gotta, I, gotta get some, I get some blue contacts. Okay, start, I'm sorry, continue. 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 Know, Let's talk about no, Abigail. No, no, no. I don't go, know. Go. She didn't seem to really even, you know, flutter a little eyelash when she killed Nick Boyd. Mm. It was an instinct. She just did it. Yeah. And then she snapped out of it and was, like, freaking out. Let me ask you a question. You did it. And then you gutted it. Yeah. See, you you you, like, you, you right. stabbed it. Oh shit! I stabbed you, and now I'm gonna open you up. Yeah, keep on going. So, so, so I'm just saying, I don't know. Stab one. Oops. Right. Opened you up. Uh, this is uh, a right. thing. Here's an interesting. Here's um, well, here's something interesting. Yes. Uh, that I thought Will's um, Will's when Will was going over the crime scene when when he saw Boyd and he started imagining the murder, mm -hmm. he usually takes the place of the killer. Mm -hmm. But this time he took the place of both people. Because he, he is so protective of her. I but he knew right away. But he knew right away it was her. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, it was reversed. And he got Abby killing him. Well, speaking of, knowing, uh, speaking of knowing right away, so I'm going to just jump back to this. Speaking of knowing right away, Jack. Jack was really, Jack knew right away. Jack's instincts are spot on. He's no will. But he knew right away. Like he knew he something was right wrong only time, in, in, in Denmark. Only time Jack has been wrong is his trust and love of Hannibal. That is yeah. the only thing yeah. that guy is doing wrong. Is and don't forget, Atlanta even said she when she was defending uh, when she was defending Abigail. She said, "I I get I can't remember the exact line. I can't look it up. But it was like I I have my reservations too. But I have no reservations against Hannibal. Like about Hannibal. Right. Yes. And that's why I'm defending her. Yeah. I mean, look, Jack is he's spot on. And then when he but when Jack, you know, gets all the evidence and finds out that the body's been found and that, that scene with Hannibal, um, it, when, he, when, he, when he has Abigail, when he's questioning her, I mean, he's Jack. Like, he knows. He, he knew she's lying from the get-go. Oh, he was good in that he scene. He was so good. He's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you've never seen it. And yep. you've never seen him before. It's like, no. And it, 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 Everyone but, was good in that scene, yeah. Well, yeah, because but he, even Dr. Bloom was like, Okay, well, she's lying, but right. she doesn't make her a killer. <laughs> well, Al Al Alana was reaching. I mean, Alana was reaching for that blank to, to cover him yeah. up, and he stopped. No, yeah. you're here by you're here by courtesy. That's a great scene. Don't interrupt me again. Yeah, that was hard, man. man. That, that was, was rough. Awesome. I like to see Nick Donovan do that shit. <laughs> no, that's a following reference. That's a following callback. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> that was yeah. take it easy, Fofo. <laughs> so, no, but yeah, so that that's anyway. So it's okay, but Abigail. So continue. So w w it's out for debate whether or not I'm willing well to this is my point that you interrupted I, I the dream that will had <laughs> I do that yeah no but fine the dream that will had I thought it was really interesting I, I I feel like that might be a telling sign as to whether or not she had any remorse whether she she meant to kill him or, or how her she did because will's never taken the persona of two different people in a yeah. crime scene before like he did in that dream state so was he taking the persona of both victims, in a way, were they both victimized, or, or was he? I, I, don't, I don't. I'm trying to understand that, so that's yeah, why I'm asking. Yeah, think that through. Uh, maybe, uh, possibly, it was him realizing she's the killer, and then in his empathic way, and and then you know he he's so sensitive towards her, he's so protective over her. Yeah. Um, maybe that was his his way of switching his idea about her. But then because he, he never looked at her the same after that when they were at the dinner table. Or he maybe that's. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe that's how he manifests the betrayal. Maybe that's how he manifests that the fact that he's figured out that she's been lying to him and that she did this thing. That's a betrayal. Yeah, and wow. so that's that's okay. his manifestation of that. His is, is that she's stabbing him, in, in you know, psychologically. Okay. I have a question. So, <laughs> explain to me what. So Abigail, you know, she's she's this ruthless killer, and she knows that she's doing the whole time, and she's not conflicted by Hannibal, and she's got caught. And what, or whatever, like I, I don't. It's not that cut and dry. I don't think ah, either. Someone says it is. That's a plowing through the thing reference. But I'm just saying. I'm right. just saying. You're, no. You still are culpable. Fine. No, no, I'm not saying she's not culpable. But culpable. But what I'm asking is, why Freddie Lowndes? Why? Why is she willing willing to tell her story now? I mean, what, what's in it for her? I mean, what you, money? Okay, but is that it? Because she seemed genuinely conflicted about it, but now you she wants have to take no control money. of it. Okay. Freddie Money. seemed conflicted about it? No, Abigail seemed conflicted about whether or not she Abigail, wants to do this. Abigail, uh, she's been talking about the house for three episodes. She's okay. been planning on selling that house. And she's, you know, she, it, was, it was one of the first things she asked, what I, was sell the house. I don't think I, it was just money taking... because she wanted she wanted to clear her name, although we found out. I think out. it's both. I think it's, it's her securing her future, yeah. taking control, and her taking control of how the public perceives her. Mm -hmm. Right. Here's what I will say, though, that, that maybe goes with you guys and three of you. I don't know where you sit on Abigail Hobbs, but... 
Uh, I do know that at that dinner, I'm the only one who didn't say plow in reference to her. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry. In, in, in that dinner, though, when she's having that 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 moment with Hannibal and, and Will and Freddie at dinner, and Freddie's eating a vegetarian, whatever it is, and not eating the meat. Hey, Freddie's pretty smart. Don't go to Hannibal's house. Yo, and go vegan. You, and you know Hannibal. Hannibal was dying to feed her Love some, some mm -hmm. meat. You know there was some some some, some man bouillon in that oh, in that in that, in that like, ritual. Have some man bouillon. <laughs> he doesn't use beef bouillon cubes. He used man bouillon. Oh, is that, is that the recipe? <laughs> I'm telling you, you, you think Hannibal's got beef bouillon cubes? No, no, no chicken, no beef. This little man. This little man cube. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but it was a weird beat where Abigail takes a bite of the meat and she kind of looks up like, hmm. Familiar. I, that's what I thought. I, like, I said it before. Say, I like, thought the same she thing. She knows. Mm. Did you, did, was that, was that beat? Well, remember her dad that? was was yeah. feeding her, that's what I'm saying. feeding did, them. Did I imagine that beat? Did you catch that? No, I think I, I caught that too. Yeah. All right. There's I a don't know. That was neat. So, that, so when he carried on into the kitchen, Abigail was ready to confess. She was kind of like, uh, you know, like you, you're gonna keep feeding me people until I tell you what happened. <laughs> 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 so I don't know. So that, that's uh, it, it's great that she's you know out of the serial killer closet, if if you will. Uh, but this is uh, this is kind of what I want to get into briefly is Hannibal because, you know, well, I, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, let's not forget all the little, the, the sly little threats, the little subtle threats that he kept giving to Abigail when she confessed about the book, that she wanted to write right. the book about, don't open this door, you're not going to be able to control what comes out of it. I, I, you know, in a way it was referring to him too. It was a little nod, nod, wink, Absolutely. wink. I know what's going on. And you've, you've probably seen what I did to Alana to cover your tracks and, right. and all the stuff I can do. So There was a lot, and I want to get into Hannibal here. There's a lot of double and maybe even triple meanings of what Hannibal was saying here. I feel like he said a lot of things like that yeah. when he says, you know, you don't want to open this door. You don't, you know, you know what's going to come out of it. I thought he was talking, I agree, talking about Abigail, talking about himself, almost a veiled threat. Yeah. I think also maybe the writing was also referring to a little bit of Will. I got a little bit of like, you know, this is, look at Will. Like he opens that door and he's, you know, one step away from being a serial killer, I think. that. So True. that's, there's kind of that. But backtracking here, Hannibal, man, I mean, again, we talk about the construction of the show and the way they do this character, how we know he's the guy, but they don't know he's the guy. So it's this great, thing they set up there when he says something in you know we take it one way as the audience but the people in the scene have, can take it another way but then they do a triple thing where abigail knows something too so he says one line and it means something to us and it means something to abigail and it means something completely different to the other folks and i think that's just really brilliant storytelling right. that's just I, good writing know, friend. it's totally great some great writing man it's really well executed as well i love that stuff but so there's a lot of that um but, you know, I'm starting to put this whole thing together with, with Hannibal here because it's obvious now that he knew the whole time that Abigail helped her father. Like, he knew the whole time. And, and, and even at TCFN, I was, I was hoping, I was wondering when you tell me. I was wondering me. when, yeah. I was wondering when you tell me. And even that one line that was a telling line, which I couldn't figure out what it, mean, it meant until the end when he goes, um, perhaps she's stronger than we think. Right. They said, she can't handle this. Abigail can't handle all this. She's going to ruin her. And I was like, I think she's stronger than you think. Meaning, like, this chick was killing some fools. I already know. Well, you know, he knows the logistics of killing people. Right. And, and he knows that, you know, if he's creepy looking like her dad, is probably not going to be the guy who gets girls up right. to the cabin to trust him. But it was also, like, so it's very much like sort of Hannibal, all-knowing Hannibal again. And then, like, this whole, this whole thing he does with Will at the end was just... Well, really crazy and then well played. There's a lot that happened in that very short scene. So I do have a, my theory. I want to start by saying that I do have the theory that his friendship with Will, much like his friendship with Abigail, is he feels like, I think he feels Abigail, he knows what she is. He knows what she's, he, she's done. He wants to sort of like bring her in and, and, and protect her and befriend her. Um, he didn't want to be friends with Tobias for whatever reason. But Will, Will is a guy who's on the verge of being that guy. I'm not saying that Hannibal's trying to push him over the edge, but I think Hannibal sees that this is a guy who's capable of going to the dark side. It's almost like the Emperor in Star Wars. Like, I'm going to bring you over. First move is I'm going to I'm gonna make you culpable in this whole, you know, I'm going to make you liable in this whole uh, murder thing I got. Mm -hmm. You know, going to befriend you. Second thing is you might kill a guy. Hey, it's okay with me. I'm Hannibal. I'm your friend. Like, I feel like that Hannibal is really slowly but surely pulling Will to the dark side. So obviously we know from the book that Will does not go all the way over. But to watch Will get closer and closer to that line with Hannibal is fascinating, you know. But in that moment of confrontation, when Will confronts Hannibal and Will finally figures the whole thing out because he's Will Graham, he's going to figure the shit out. When he figures it out, there's that moment when he confronts Hannibal and he's drawing. And I don't know if you guys caught this, but he 
touches the exacto knife. Mm -hmm. It's an instant. It's a moment of like, am I gonna kill this one? Yeah. Nah, I got it. it was, but it was such, such a cool, subtle yeah, thing of absolutely. like. Well, I think that whole scene was he was testing Will to see where he was gonna go, and yeah. if right. Will said he was gonna go to Jack. He would have killed her. I mean, he already did that to Miriam a couple episodes. But I think in the he decided he wasn't going to kill Will in that moment because he was on at the table. He's like, oh, of course. He's like, hey, you know, uh, Abigail killed Abigail killed what's his name, and and Hannibal's like, of course, I knew that. He's like, well, did, did you, you know, did you tell did you tell uh, Jack? He's like, well, no. He's like, cool. Anyway, from that <laughs> moment on, it was over. You know, it it's was like it was, it was like over. an instinctive move. Yeah, and then he sort of realized who mm. he's dealing with, who he's talking with. This is his buddy. This is Will. Yeah. He sort of created like one big happy effed up family for himself. And there was some moments that was very my two dads. Yeah. To me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 oh, I, I think that they have crossed over into this. I asked the question: Are they still frenemies? Well, actually, the frenemies were Tobias and uh, who were they frenemies for? Was it Tobias and no, it's Will and. And Will and, no, no, it was Will and Hannibal were frenemies we, last week, right? Yeah, yeah, from the other week. I think they've crossed over from the frenemy zone into actual, like, I agree with you guys, like, they're actual friends Well, here's, yeah. here's a question. We don't have to answer this now because we have to wrap up. Yeah. But here's a question to ponder. If, if w as far as what Hannibal thinks of Will and Abigail and everyone else, he's serving them people as far as we know. What does that signify for him to you, serve, he, well, serve he just, people? He, to he people. doesn't. He but doesn't. I, he, he doesn't think there's anything wrong with it. But he, he serves people. it to people that he likes or he cares about yeah. in some way. So I almost feel like I he think is it's kind satisfying of satisfying to him. It's, yeah. it's like a little piece of yeah. him in them. Yeah. Yeah, he made it for Tobias too. I mean, I think right. he just I think that this is just what Hannibal serves. I don't think there's anything I don't think he sees anything. I just wrong think there's it. a Wait, meaning to everything, and I feel like there's a meaning to that too. What did you, what did you say? It's a I don't know. What did I say? It's, a, <laughs> it's like a little uh, uh, satisfying. It's like a little piece of him in them. Okay. Got it. Hmm. Like Joe's honeymoon. But... <laughs> oh, oh. I'm, I'm not I sure what that. you meant. I, d I don't know what that meant either. I, I'm sorry. I, I enjoyed just, my honeymoon. It was very nice. It was... It was <laughs> anyway. All right. So um, let's go to news and gossip. Let's do that. After Buzz TV News. It was, I just... We have a, a wonderful. I just, I saw it was a thing. I oh, that's did, good. I I'm sure it was. Myself. I'm sure it was brilliant. Like I couldn't make it about her. No, you couldn't do that. That'd Nando. be awkward. Nando. What about Nando? We don't. We know. Yeah. He's no. not married. He's, he's not, there you go. It's about you. All right. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, news. Great gossip. news. Good news. Great, great news. Better than good. It's great. Hannibal. Has this been... news is so good. Yes. All right. We should tell everybody what it is. I'm trying. All right. Hannibal has been renewed for oh! season two. So it, 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 we're very, very happy about that. It's been in the bubble for weeks and weeks mm -hmm. and weeks, and it's finally, gonna, it's finally been officially renewed. We can all breathe a heavy <sighs> sigh of relief that we will Hallelujah. be back. We all will be back. All of you guys who made this show number one, and maybe they saw how good, well the show was doing on After Buzz. They decided, should thank us. That's what you that couldn't have heard. So appreciate that. And then also the other little piece of news and gossip we have briefly is that we have a special guest coming in uh, for our next episode. Um, Which will be later tonight if you guys are, are tuning in. Yeah, streaming. we're, 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 doing, we're, doing, we're, we're doing live. We're caught up, guys. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're going to have uh, our guy Aaron Abrams in, who plays um, in, in one of the super super medical examiner in the, cor the corners in the, in the in the room that we see that we see every day, and uh, we're going to get to ask him all those questions that we wanted to ask him. So if you guys are, well, this won't be up in time, will it? I don't know. If you have any questions for him. I don't if think it'll be up live, in time, but if you're watching yeah, live, if you're watching live, yeah. any questions for tweet him, us. please tweet at us and let yeah. us know. We'll be we'll, recording we'll 11 o'clock Pacific time. Yeah, we have some time there. Yes. That's it. Uh, now let's, do you want to jump into predictions? Do it. We're all caught up. Oh, gosh. We can do our, our now, first official prediction. This is exciting. TV. This is real. I don't know how to predict without cheating. Who wants That's to go seeing first? What's happening next week? No. Nando, go. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I think there's gonna be another psychosis. I just don't know what. Another symptom of his of his further descent. Uh, I haven't seen any clips for this episode, so I have no idea what else to expect. But uh, I do find it interesting that Hannibal and Will now share a secret. So I feel mm. like mm -hmm. Will's gonna start suspecting Hannibal more. How about that? Julia? Mm. Um, I think Abigail is a bad, bad girl, guys. Mm. I really do. I, I think, think so, it's too. it's going to come out. I think she she is manipulating every single person that she touches. Mark my words. Joe. I, I agree with Miss Julia here. My prediction is that Abigail will get involved in a caper with Hannibal, and Hannibal will eventually have to eliminate Abigail because he will not be able to control her. Mm, I think yes. eventually Hannibal's going to have to whack Abigail because he can't control that chick, and long term she's gonna she's gonna have her own agenda, which 
Uh, I think he's going to dig for a minute, but I think eventually it's going to be uh, too much for him to deal with. I do agree, but I want to flip that. I think Ab it had him a will have to kill Abigail, but not because he can't control her, and because he can't control her, but not because she has her own agenda, but just because she is good, and she's going to crack, and she's going to want to confess to Jack and everyone. It's going to be so sad. She manipulated you, you so too. Bad. Yeah, she's she so got great. got to you too, Brad. Look at that. Look, Look at him. Look at so him. sweet. I killed eight girls. Joe's like, I love you anyway. <laughs> <She's sweet. laughs> I love you so much. Nando Bell, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Nando Bell. N-A-N-D-O-V-E-L and here for some other shows. Let's go on. <laughs> uh, Julia Carely. Uh Twitter. Find me at Twitter at Julia Carely. J-U-L-I-A-C-E-A-R-L-E-Y. Joe. Uh, you can find me on the Twitters at Joe Flippo, uh, J O E F L I P O. And uh, here we also do, well, no, we don't do anything anymore, do we? Mad Men. Mad, Mad Men. Oh, my Man. goodness. Maybe Mad Men on Sunday nights. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, Escape from Planet Earth is coming out on DVD in the next few days. If you guys uh, want a good show for your kids, go out and buy the DVD, Escape from Planet Earth. It's awesome. At Joe K. Braswell on Twitter and on Mad Men, and we're doing a live Mad Men finale on the 23rd. Which will be would, awesome. Which will be awesome. Tickets are on sale at, at, at uh, John Lovett's. Uh, at, at, I don't know the, I don't know the website, but, but you can find tickets here on AfterBuzz.tv.com. If you want to go there, if you're in town, it should be fantastic. Uh, and you can find me an extra and on Grantland.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.